Hey everybody, this is Dave, the shipyard modeler. But today I'm working on a tank because I'm waiting for some supplies for some supplies before I can finish my uh, HMS Repulse, which is like, see, right here, kind of under construction. Anyway, but I gotta wait for some supplies before I get that done. In the meantime, I'm working on this little M1 Abrams, and I thought this would be a great time to, uh, opportunity to demonstrate basic dry brushing techniques that I use when I build a model. Now what we're going to make it, we're going to make that side look like this side. See, all those, see how nicely detailed that is? I'm going to show you how we do that. First of all, I've got the black, painted all the raised and detailed areas with thin, thin down black paint. It's like I did on the PT boat. And how we dry brush is, I'm gonna, it's going to be kind of difficult. I've got to hold it out like this. Now, first of all, I take the brush when it's wet and paint the flat area. See that? Where there isn't any detail. And once the brush gets a little iffy, uh, just do a light brush. See? Very light. I'm not pressing at all. I only press until some paint comes off. See, now the paint's dry. Now the brush is dry and I can go a little bit wild with it. Now we're going to start laying down paint on these detail parts. See how that works? I'm putting pretty decent pressure on now. I'm just trying to get paint off on the raised surfaces. All the little rivets and stuff like that. Okay, that pretty much took care of that brush load. I'm going to get another brush load. And uh, I'm going to wet brush up here. I try to keep paint off the parts that are going to be glued because I like to use model glue, not super glue. So uh, model glue doesn't secure to paint. So I use crazy glue if I have to. I mean, if I see I'm painting the gaps there between those items. See how I'm doing that? Looks awful sloppy, doesn't it? Okay, now, brush is pretty dry, so I'm going to start on a... It's still a little bit too wet. So when it's wet, you just go back to a flat area. There we go. Still a little bit wet. Okay, now it's good. In other words, you don't want to lump the paint on. You don't want to lump the paint on. So if, you got to get wait till you're dry before you go to these sections and redo them. And I'm pressing down pretty hard here. A little bit harder than I like to. But uh, I'm working with enamel paint too. And I prefer enamel. I recommend this is a Model Master Desert Sand and Model Master Airbrush Thinner. I don't use an airbrush but I use the airbrush thinner to thin down the paints. They tend to get lumpy and as you can see this paint dried out at one point and can't get the top off, so I just closed it up with a piece of tape. Now I just got a lot of, a lot of paint on this brush, way too much. So I'm gonna take some of it out on the bottom. Since the bottom, you know, nobody's gonna see it. I just do a real quick, rough paint job on the bottom. I mean, you can see how much time it takes to do everything else. This is the way I do my ships, by the way. So if you. Uh, link up to one of those ships uh, listings and see them for sale and you wonder why they cost so much because they're painted like this mostly there, see how we're working that there we go oh, I got it pretty dry work back around here you see that see how it's maintaining uh, see how the detail starts to come out really good I'm not doing this at a great angle either. This is doing it in front of his, the camera and trying to keep the camera stable. <sighs> Too much paint again. It's kind of difficult for me to do it at this angle. I'm trying to do it so you can see what I'm doing. See those big, the big areas without detail? Go ahead and fill those. Got a little bit too much there. I'm just using my thumb to take it off. A little bit too much there. 
a little bit too much here and there isn't going to bother because you know you're you're simulating grease wear and stuff so grease wear isn't uniform so if you get a little bit more here and there that's okay side isn't coming out as good as the other side because well I'm shooting a video and talking too much but <laughs> instead of concentrating on doing it I'm also trying to do it fast for the video now, this is a 170 second scale M1 Abrams and uh, I just want it to look realistic so I'm gonna have a uh, you know my paints drop now my brush is dry it's not dropping anything but as you can see it's starting to look like that again a little bit more paint I just want a little bit. Keep getting too much. I can't see the paint in this bottle, so I just kind of have to dip in until I think I got some. You know. All right, we're gonna take some off on the bottom here. Again, I got that done. Now I'm gonna get this black up here. See those that edge? Yeah. I'm gonna get this black. Now I start working on these edges. Okay, I want to get all the flat stuff. All the big black lumps out so that all we have are like black grease stuck in the cracks, you see. I mean, normally I'd be working from different angles, right? But because of the video, I'm only doing one angle, so you can see how this side of everything is, isn't quite as well done. So I gotta turn it over here like this for a while. All right, now I'm just grind I'm grinding the paint in. This is the last the last bit I put in. I usually put on really hard, and you got to watch for bristles coming out of your brush, and you got to clean the brushes really well and shape them. Hope you can see that. See, I just I get most of the paint off, and then I just kind of work lightly over, and I increase the pressure as the paint dries more and more, less less and less paint, I'm just till the point where I'm just laying down particles and that's when I hit the detail areas. Over and over again. I'm using enamel paint and it's really quick dry, so stuff dries fast so it's conducive to putting on multiple coats like this really quickly. If you know <laughs> consider for dry brushing. I mean obviously it's dry brushing and it takes so that's how long it took to paint that panel there with the dry brush. And uh, I'm going to make sure I get a good cover. I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more paint on there and check for any gray spots. And I just get a bunch of paint in the clear areas. I've got all the detail. And come at it from the other angle. <laughs> Sorry. Just, there we go. Hope you can see. I hope you can see this. I hope I'm not wasting my time. There's a hair in there. You can get it out with your fingernail, just like that. And before it dries, there's more paint on there. If you get it quick enough, you'll be able to get all that paint off there. Fuck, see, you've got a paint lump. all that paint off there, when you get a hair, you scratch it off, when you get your paint, immediately get some more paint on the brush, so you have wet paint on the brush, and then hit the area that you just scratched, and if you have wet paint on the brush, it'll soften up the paint you already put, just put on, just enough to, just enough to keep it from, so that you can, see now you can't tell where that hair was, because the paint's smooth. That's a hair from the brush. I also now and then get cat hair stuck on one and that can be a pain. That's why I don't build cars, by the way. Too hard to get. You can't get the paint out of a gloss spray paint job. I mean the cat hair. Anyway, there you go. Finished. It's ready for the wheels. And that's a dry breast M1 tank chassis. Hope you enjoyed that. See you later.